Hi, uh, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, we're going to look at Bordoni uh, number 23. And um, I, I like this one. And it's, uh, these are good because everyone presents a little bit different challenges. Good thing to remember is that these are vocal vocalises, uh, vocal exercises. Uh, but they're also nice little melodies with character. So I'll go ahead and play this for you now. Um, they're getting a little longer at this point. So uh, bear with me here. And uh, hopefully uh, this will be enjoyable for you. Okay, a little choppy at the end. I think you get the idea. I'd like to have another shot at it, actually, but I'm not going to make you listen to it all the way through. Um, why don't we just talk about a couple of things and uh, see what we can get done. One of the big problems for me in playing uh, longer pieces when I'm not playing with someone else is it's a matter of concentration. You have to kind of stay involved with it. And uh, it's easy for the mind to wander, especially if you're, if you're not occupied with trumpet stuff, you know, playing Trump, uh, trumpet and figuring out how to, you know, maneuver the physical things. Um, but there are always musical things that we, that should be kind of keeping us alive as we go along. Um, I'm going to try the, uh, the last section again and see if, uh, I can do a little bit better job for you. It starts moving around more as you, as you heard. And so mostly the deal is just keep connecting the flow. It helps to know it a little bit better than I know it, obviously. <laughs> uh, I wasn't quite prepared for some of the things coming up, but uh, let me try the last section again. Okay, got a little water in the horn. All right, um, that felt a little bit better. Now, what can we get out of this etude? Any etude, exercise, drill, 
solo excerpt that you play is an opportunity. Opportunity to uh, kind of be honest with yourself about what you're good at and what you're not good at. So <clears throat> we can put restrictions on ourselves or we can kind of minister as much freedom to ourselves as possible. But in that freedom, there is a constraint. You're aiming at a specific musical target. And that target, um, the clearer it is in your mind, the easier it is to play. And that's a simple idea, but I, I, want, you to, I want you to really grasp onto that. The reason why I still was not satisfied with that is because I still don't have as clear an idea in my mind as I should have. I'm still kind of working it out, right? I don't generally practice these before I play them for you, so it puts me at a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, but nevertheless, I want to, want to give you a realistic viewpoint about what's happening. Uh, I, I was taking a lesson with uh, Mr. Herseth one time. Those of you who don't know, he played principal trumpet in the Chicago Symphony for many decades and was somebody who was very inspiring to me and, and many other players of my generation. Um, and he said, um, you know, I don't make physical mistakes anymore, only mental mistakes. And I thought about that for a long time. That's exactly what was, what was my problem in this etude. I was making mental mistakes. I was losing my focus on where I was going. I was kind of breaking the chain of connection in the musical line. Um, and how do you know that? Well, you have to learn how to observe yourself when you're playing. That's probably the most important skill, is to be in the moment, kind of be outside of yourself, and watching at the same time while you're doing. It's a very interesting state of mind, but every performer kind of knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, some some uh, athletes call it being in the zone. It's kind of like you're watching it happen. It's a kind of a Zen thing. Uh, so, uh, musically, technically, what are some things that could be, uh, that you could explore or pay attention to that would be interesting for you? The first thing I notice is it says mezzo piano. What is that? Well, medium soft. Okay. Um, there are some accents. Uh, so I'm getting some information. Uh, I've got a tempo marking. That's from the editors. They suggested this tempo marking. And I'm pretty close to the tempo marking, I think. Um, but what, what's, you know, what can I get distracted by? And what's really going on musically? So you have a modulation happening. That means that whole first idea that I just played is one idea. It's going to where it changes key at the end, and then it comes back into the major key uh, in the next entrance. So looking at bigger sections of the piece is really, really important on something like this. Um, a lot of people would play the accents, would pay too much attention to the accents. And that's a matter of what kind of character do you want the music to have. So, so for example, Now that sounds kind of dumb <laughs> to me because when you accent those notes, it takes away from the musical line. Now, I don't know if those markings are Bordonis. I don't think they probably are. I think they're a suggestion from the editors. And if so, they had something in mind musically. The question is, what was it? So I'm, instead of accenting with the tongue, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to play the full length of the note. I'm going to bow the note generously on the half notes. So this is the kind of thing you want to experiment with. It's the kind of thing you want to try it as many different ways as you can think of. Um, let's, work, let's work through the piece. I think there are some other things we can take a look at. The dotted rhythm is going to bother some people. And that's another very, very inter interesting thing because it's an insistent rhythm that kind of draws attention to itself. Dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. It's kind of got a military flavor to it. And this is a lyrical etude, so it shouldn't be so much that. So what's the range that you can cover? Well, first of all, you want to play it accurately, as we talked, talked about before. Uh, 
So you have that subdivision running in your mind. That's basic musicianship, and everybody should be learning how to do that and getting better at that all the time. Um, once you've got that, and it becomes automatic, so you have an internal rhythm, you have an internal drummer. Uh, sorry, I just got a flash on Animal from the Muppets. That's kind of my internal drummer. <laughs> so it's that guy in there. And, and that's something you want to develop that feel. If, if, you, if it's not strong for you, re really work on it by listening. Let it kind of enter into your body. Now, let's say the rhythm is no problem for you at all. Then you've got to figure out what to do with it. Maybe you're going to interpret it. So I might, I might uh, so to speak, flip the rhythm. In other words, I'm going to play the 16th too quickly. And that gives it a little bit more energy like this but it distracts the listener from something else I want to show them. Uh, I want to show them the whole line. So that was, as you could hear, more smooth. These are the interpretations I want you to mess around with. That's what makes playing these things fun. It's not a technical exercise. It's a musical exercise. Now there's some technical things in it, and we'll get to that in a second, and then I'll let you go practice. But um, I want to show you a little thing about that rhythmic figure that's really important. We're going to be talking about this uh, quite a bit because it's one of the most valuable skills we have for creating kind of like musical expression. And that is what you might think of as a breath inflection. Um, so if I did it with my voice. So there's a kind of a tossing of the air. That's high-level musicianship. Now, that takes a certain level of control, but it gives you so much more expression. So I'm just going to play a little spot. Now, when you play it very smoothly like that, it, then the rhythm kind of blends in, and you get more of the line. But if I change it a little bit, now I'm going to throw the 16th a little bit. You see how I'm emphasizing the rhythm now? Those are musical choices. This is not about right and wrong. This is about, I like the way that sounds. That fits my feeling uh, for the piece. So I, I, all I can do is strongly encourage you to, to play around with these things. For me, this is what this entire book is, is really about. However, there are some technical difficulties. And you notice from my first performance that um, I stumble a bit uh, near the end. So these are the kinds of things that are purposely placed by the composer, by Mr. Bodogni. Um, so I'm looking at uh, bar, what, 45? So you're, you've been playing along. All of a sudden you have this quick motion into the upper register and then back down into the low register. And uh, it should sound easy, or at least that's what we work for. <laughs> So, so it can sound like, like somebody singing it with great skill and great, and great freedom. That's the kind of stuff you want to do slow practice on. Um, and there are many technical aspects that, that fit into that. And you'll have to kind of look in, the, in what you might call the nuts and bolts section, techniques, um, that I'm going to be gradually adding to um, over the years, uh, God willing. Um, but this, this, is a, this is basic technique, you might call it, you know, if you're working on your lip slurs, that's what you're working on. But all you're trying to, what you're trying to do is actually very simple. It's just like what a singer's trying to do. Um, 
and that all the way through the piece, and it, see how he did it, last four lines of the piece, he's starting to stack up the difficulty. So he's been singing along on this nice manageable tune um, and hopefully enjoying it. And then you get to this spot and just like I did, you kind of trip a little bit. <clears throat> so don't let that bother you. That's just a sign that you need to get back to work. And the work is to get the satisfaction of playing the music with, with uh, beauty and quality um, so that uh, it's kind of an encouragement for people to listen to. Yes, there is beauty and truth and order in the universe. And even if that isn't true uh, in our lives for much of the time, at least that's something that we want to be true and hope to be true. And as musicians, we can kind of encourage people that maybe it's possible that a hundred different people with different backgrounds and different problems can get together and play a symphony. Uh, isn't it great? <laughs> so thanks for joining me again today. And uh, uh, I only say again, enjoy your practice. See you later on. Bye-bye.